All right. Here we go. Welcome um, to, to episode four. Yep. Of the all, We All Know Nothing podcast. Yeah. Yeah. Um, today, we're covering water. Um, Which is one of the crazier topics. Yes, yeah, so we're covering the craziness of water. This is what I titled The Craziness of Water and Deuterium Depletion. Mm-hmm. Um, and this is the second time we're recording this because the first recording was... We just went, I went a little overboard and to the complexity, and I didn't realize how long it would take to lay this all out, mm-hmm. so we're trying to create this new one to simplify it. The other one, I almost, like, planned too much, so now I'm, like, throwing that all out. Well, not all of I it, might throw but... things in to yeah. the video from that, so if it's, like, lighter out, it's because it was from that first recording yeah, that first we recording. did. Um, and it just... Yeah, we just decided to try and record this again yeah. to make it more simple for for everyone. Yeah, and I'm sure we will have more discussions about water on future episodes as well. Yeah, so, it's going to be a very... Water and light are going to be a theme. Ongoing, our, yeah. yeah. I know this podcast episode is pretty dense and complex. Hang in there till the end. I know you'll get a lot from this episode. The reason we started this podcast was to pretty much get to this episode. Um, I've been wanting to lay out this information for a long time to my friends and family and whoever else is listening, I hope you enjoy. Um, The reason we do everything that we do for health comes down to what we talk about in this specific episode with water and deuterium depletion. I know some of the Ideas and concepts we lay out in this podcast are a bit radical from conventional thinking. Our goal with all of our podcasts is to get people looking in a different direction. I think it's good to be skeptical, um, and if you're one of those people that are still skeptical of this subject after you listen to this podcast, um, I'm interested in hearing from you and uh, hearing your opinions on this podcast. Give me some time to really explain what deuterium is and why it's so important for our health. Deuterium becomes increasingly important to focus on um, due to how quickly our environment is changing. And I'll get into more details on that. Depleting deuterium should be a focus as 5G is rolling out. But yeah, let's get started. So today I want to give everyone a different perspective on cancer and all diseases. Um, Like the cure for cancer and all diseases, I believe, will come down to the smallest scales, which comes down to hydrogen Um, and the smallest atom that's the most abundant thing in our body. Uh, I'm not a doctor. All I'm doing is laying out concepts you can use to be healthier. I would say deuterium and deuterium depletion is the very bleeding edge of health and wellness. And I recommend everyone look into the subject further. Also, when I say cancer, what I'm really saying is fill in the blank with whatever metabolic disease. Really, everything comes to the mitochondrial dysfunction. Um, I know people are probably rolling their eyes when I keep saying, like, this is the cure for this or that. Yeah, like, he's oversimplifying. And I'm not, I mean, I've always hated that. We've, yeah, we've we've been very, we've been really designed, or like, over the years, it's like, it don't, that's a turn off to hear someone say that. Mm-hmm. But really, this is like, you would think if something's fixing cancer, it's going to fix all these other things too. Like, mm-hmm. that just makes a lot of sense to me. And really, I'm not selling a pill or anything. If there's ever a cure for cancer, it's going to be acting on de- nature. depleting deuterium. And the act, acting on how which, nature optimized your body. Which, yeah, I think... The cure already exists in its nature, it's sunlight, it's all these things mm-hmm. that our body has yeah. evolved to work with. And what's sad is like, yeah, we have to now hack ways to figure out to deplete de- deuterium better because our environment is so high in other stressors. And really that goes to like everything we've been talking about. Yeah. And really we're just, we have nothing to sell you so I've feel okay about talking about this stuff. Yeah. I'm not telling you to go take we're a supplement. We're also not doctors, so we can't, like... But we're telling you to get you more sunlight, Opposite. drink really good water, watch the sunrise, block blue light, block artificial light, mm-hmm. and then this is the reason why and why it affects so many things, because it affects down to the smallest scale. Yeah. And what it's doing from biophysics and changing your biochemistry. Yeah. 
Um, so I guess, how should we start into the complexity of water? So we talked about some of this on the first podcast. Um, I recommend everyone check out Andrew Pollock, The Fourth Phase of Water, his TED Talk. He also has a book, um, top of my head, I, it might be The Fourth Phase of Water. That might be what it's called. Um, he was the first one that really... Um, showed me the complexity of water. Mm -hmm. The first thing that ever, like, when I started to research it was someone told me that the heart doesn't actually pump blood, Mm -hmm. and physics actually, like, it breaks the laws of physics if it did, because your capillaries in some parts of your body are smaller than your red blood cells, yet the red blood cells are able to pump through it. Mm -hmm. And the amount of force your heart would have to have to pump through the miles upon miles of veins. I don't know. I can't think at the top of my head, but I feel like you can wrap around the earth. Yeah. Like twice. For sure. With all your veins and capillaries. So there's no way the heart's actually doing that. And what's actually going on is this fourth phase of water. And your blood is, I believe, 90% water. Mm -hmm. Something like that. it's this um, structured water where water... Um, when it's exposed to infrared light or red light and infrared light, 600 to 3,100 nanometer light, which is 42% of sunlight, Mm -hmm. it charge separates these, um, water particles and, um, it creates an exclusion zone Mm -hmm. and on anything that's hydrophilic. So anything that likes water and your veins and pretty much every, almost all the surfaces in your body are these hydrophilic surfaces yeah. that create this st- structured water um, in different degrees. And there's a lot of things. That's what's kind of interesting is how, how do we capture this light to create this exclusion zone? Mm-hmm. And I think, I don't want to go into too much detail because this is something you need to see on that video mm-hmm. of really, the, and he's really only touching the very basics of this. Mm-hmm. But if you shine a red, he found if you have a hydrophilic tube, he took like a silicon tube mm-hmm. and shined infrared light into it, and water particles would move through it without any um, mode of force. So there's nothing pushing, um, and they they put like micro beads into the water, mm-hmm. and they could film the fluid going through this tube. And they couldn't explain what it was, but really it's this really deep physics of water. And we think we know all there is to know about water, but really we know absolutely nothing about water and how the water molecules interact with one another, specifically the bonds and this dance they do. One thing that's crazy about water is the top researchers... (laughs) Physicists believe that it's 974 billion, 600 million parts photon to matter. Mm -hmm. So water is actually made of more light than actual matter. Interesting. And that's hard to wrap your head around. I've seen that a couple places just talking about... And what that is is really the photons are buried into... And stored by the by the water mm-hmm. in the hydrogen bonds, and um, there's also a documentary on memory of water. So this oh, idea that yeah. water has memory, and it stores information Based from the, the environment, it what it's yeah. touched, the and photons that interacted with it. Yeah, yeah. And there's something to that. It like leaves an imprint. It's almost like it leaves a code behind. And something that Jack Cruz said on um, a Luke Story podcast that really resonated with me and made a lot of sense was he said that he believes our memories are stored in water, which that's something like science hasn't been able to explain is where memories are stored. And it's never like made sense to me that your neurons um, in your brain could hold and it's like it's creating this electrical signal. And it's stored electrically in your brain. It just hasn't made sense to me. But water's electric. As crazy as the brain is. But it's storing this light information. And then your brain, what it's doing. So he says that it's stored in the 
water matrix of your body. Mm -hmm. So it's not stored in your brain, but your brain would be creating an electrical signal out of this electromagnetic um, information stored in water. Mm -hmm. And that's really hard for people to believe or, you know, at first, but... It's the or only even thing just that, understand, like, the that only was thing super that makes, complex. It only, it's the only thing that makes sense to me that could actually, like, has the ability to store information mm-hmm. is water in your body. Nothing else that I can think of, it would make sense that it, it's crazier to me that neurons could store um, information. Yeah. So it makes total sense to me that everything we know and remember and, and yeah. is stored in water. Maybe. Um, and then I also wrote down a quote that I wanted to do from Jack Cruz. So he posted us on Facebook. He said, Tesla said, if you want to find the secrets of the universe, think of terms of energy, frequencies, and vibration. And then he said it needs updating. If you want to find out about the energy and information of the universe, you need to think in terms of lattice, condensed matter, physics, quantum spin, orbital angular momentum, frequency and how all conspire they all conspire to create a vibration that manifests in the spectrum of light that proteins on a planet can use or cannot use so really he's talking about like so there's non the light that we can use Mm -hmm. is native light from like sunlight to our cells release low frequency uv light Mm -hmm. extremely it's called elf uv light and all of these light signals are doing things to water. And again, in the first podcast, we talked about how there's 100 biochemical reactions happening per second in your cell. Mm-hmm. And the only thing that makes sense that could control that is light. And how is it doing that? Is it's hitting these, these hydrated proteins. The major one is glycine, and they act as antennas for light. And the hydrated proteins create a semiconductor. So they have this structured water. Mm -hmm. They're absorbing the photons. And it's changing the the angular momentum and spin state. So you're changing... Angular orbital momentum. Yeah, so you're changing the spin state of the electrons, protons... And then the photons buried in the water. And that's where the information is stored is the, um, the electron orbiting the proton mm-hmm. and this dance of how the light interacts with water. Because when you change that, you change the electromagnetic properties of water. You change the viscosity, you change how light is polarized, which means how the light interacts with water, how it is reflected, refracted, absorbed, stored, and how the light is scattered. The mitochondria are quantum supercomputers that make this water, um, and they float around suspended in this water. They sense and react to every single electromagnetic frequency in our environment, from visible light to every non-visible spectrum. It does this through the interaction of light and water and how that light is polarized in the water in each cell. Mitochondria are reacting by changing their 3D structure, their geometry, the structure of geometry of the mitochondria change the biophysics of what the mitochondria is doing and how it's functioning in the absolute smallest scales inside the mitochondrial matrix. When you add deuterium, you get massive changes to all of these properties of water. Um, and how light interacts with that water changes dramatically, which impacts your mitochondria and the biophysics of how your body works. So it's really just, this is what's opened my mind to just how complex nature really is. Mm -hmm. And it's kind of inspired this podcast that we all know nothing. But but also how simple things come down to. Yes, the science is really super complex. And I like, this podcast is the one I'm the least equipped to like chime in on. Yeah. But um, I think... At the highest level, like, once Phil gets done with all of the science, you realize, like, oh, water is the most important thing to life. Water is one of, like, the most fundamental things, and it's pretty basic once And I don't feel qualified to talk about this subject. Yeah, this is, like, it's Like, the amount of time I've spent trying to... Prep for this. And, well, this has been, like, two or three years of reading and trying to wrap my head around how... 
water works and I still yeah. don't I still no. don't know because it's like this weird well you the to, experts don't either you so have to I be like have fair. this like you keep learning new things and you create this picture in your brain of like maybe what's happening and I know it's wrong what I think yeah. so I, it keeps progressing but all I'm laying out here is water is extremely crazy and underappreciated yeah. and that is where science should be focused on like there is some crazy things that'll come out of the physics yeah. of water And my problem with medicine today is it's biochemistry and they've removed and taken out the biophysics. And now there's this hopefully emerging field and push to put physics back into biology. So biophysics and the physics determine the biochemical reactions that happen in you. Yeah. And that's kind of what this podcast is about when we go into deuterium and stuff because we're talking about the smallest scales because everyone knows water is H2O. It seems pretty basic and uh, we all take it for granted because it's everywhere and it seems like the most basic thing. Um, 60% of the human body is made of water and water accounts for 90% of our body weight. H2O molecules are so small that we can't even observe them with Um, even our best microscopes. Hydrogen is the most abundant element in our body. 99% of the molecules in our body are hydrogen. Um, And it's because they're so small. It's not by mass. Um, Mm -hmm. Water is a huge mystery to us because we don't understand how the water molecules interact with one another. Um, To truly begin to understand water, one needs to approach it from physics perspective, specifically quantum physics, because water is dealing with the smallest scales in nature, protons, electrons, and neutrons. Um, Water is the most important thing for life, yet biology and today's medicine knows very little about it. That's what makes it hard to understand and study, because you have to use all these other um, tools to be able to study what water is even doing and kind of conceptualize and put this picture together. Mm -hmm. And uh, deuterium, I guess... We've been throwing that word out a bit, and I guess we should just go ahead and kind but of explain yeah, what deuterium is. Do you want to explain, is? like, fourth phase of water selects for H+, plus, which is protium. Yeah, the, so... Or light that's hydrogen. That's important. So the structured water is... It excludes everything down to the proton size, and do, that includes deuterium because deuterium has a proton and a neutron attached to each other Mm -hmm. and to build if if you use deuterium depleted water and um well that's what our body uses yes exactly and it's able to create a bigger um charge separation and a bigger battery out of our water in our cell Mm -hmm. make making them more efficient making them able to use so that's where deuterium depletion kind of that's one aspect of why it's important so now we're going to get into... I so if think, you're heavily deuterated, then obviously your cells malfunction. You have less um, You have less of this fourth phase water in your cells. Okay, and then let's explain. So deuterium, so regular um, hydrogen is one proton and one electron orbiting that proton. Um, the proton has 1,800 times more mass. So protons are pretty large and mm-hmm. the electron is really small. Mm-hmm. And it's the smallest atom in the universe. Then there's isotopes of mm-hmm. atoms. And when you you create isotopes by adding neutrons. But specifically when you add a neutron to hydrogen... It doubles the mass. It doubles the mass because it only had one proton. It was but tiny you, anyway. Yeah. yeah, if you added a neutron to... There's different versions of carbon. And you don't change the weight much. Right. Only like, this is already pretty big. And when you change, think of it like a planet. When you change the mass, you're going to change the orbit. Mm -hmm. And the electron is orbiting around that. And you change the physics of the entire molecule or the entire atom. And its bonding strength changes. So you can think of this deuterium as like sticky glue Mm -hmm. in your body. Because the bonding strength to everything is... Instead of being nice and fluid and like oil. It's like eight to six times stronger bonding to carbon... Um, nitrogen and oxygen. I think of it bond. Yeah, so it's got a stronger bond, and this bond and, that's an extra neutron. and just the double size changes 
all these things. Yeah. Um, the biophysics that are going on in your body, not the bio, which changes the biochemistry of what that's able to do. Yeah. But nature uses, um, uses it in different ways too. So yeah. It's like, so it's not necessarily a hundred percent bad. Mm-hmm. Deuterium does exist in nature. We use it for metabolism and growth. Yep. And I guess to explain why the main issue with deuterium, you have to get into the mitochondria. Mm-hmm. And we haven't really done a podcast on the mitochondria. Most people yeah, we listening need to this will know the basics of it. But the mitochondria are bacteria that evolved into our cells. And they are known as like the powerhouse of our cells. They create ATP. But what um, most people don't realize is they also create water. And I think that is the, a Exclusion lot of... Exclusion zone water. That's like kind of the new information is the water your mitochondria makes way more important than the ATP. Like the ATP um, unfolds proteins and does some other things, but the water is like that it makes is what's really the energy in your body because it holds all this information. And the mitochondria recycle and produce... Um, close to 2,000 gallons of water per day. That's crazy. Which sounded crazy to me at first. I'm like, how could that be possible? But it's close to your heart produ- your your heart pumps about 2,000 gallons of blood per day. Okay. So about the amount of water your mitochondria are... And it's not like making it all new. So it's making it from the food you eat and from recycling old water mm-hmm. with the oxygen you breathe. And from and the sunlight, your information is stripping these hydrogen molecule or hydrogen ions because it's an ion when you strip an electron from it mm-hmm. and put it through the five cytochromes, and oxygen um, is waiting and it accepts the it's a negatively charged and it accepts the positively charged hydrogen mm-hmm. and creates water and the mitochondrial matrix Mm -hmm. and this is what fills your cells but i think what's also important is to tell people that this is happening at like uh you have a hundred trillion mitochondria yeah each mitochondria have 1500 atpas motors Mm. and these atpa motors are spinning 9,000 revolutions per minute recycling 1500 protons per second hydrogen protons Mm -hmm. and those protons are the hydrogen molecule or protons that eventually make water yeah so it's recycling protons to make water and when you wrap your head around that it's like a crazy number of like what the mitochondria are doing oh for sure i mean it's an infinite it just tells you like the infinite thing that's going on in your body right now all the time yeah and if deuterium which has this double double the mass gets into the atpas motors which are really delicate protein nanostructures they're tiny 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 because again they're re- they're they're spinning and um one proton hydrogen proton fits into it and every 3.5 rotations it creates one atp molecule most people know what ATP is. Mm-hmm. That's um, what's what's creating energy. Mm-hmm. Aside, so every time that turns 3.5 times, you create an ATP molecule. And this is happening... Um, Crazy. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, that's that's spinning faster than your car engine. Yeah. 9,000 revolutions In every minute. one of your, your cells. Your car's like doing 3,000. When it's redlining, it's doing 6,000 revolutions yeah. per minute. And Our bodies are crazy. If one, if deuterium gets into it, it breaks that nanomotor. So, mm-hmm. it, just tiny fluctuations in the amount of deuterium in your body, and where deuterium is, can have a huge effect on your health yeah. because it's breaking these nano motors, and then you're producing less water. And that if you produce less water, you become dehydrated at a different level than most people want to think about with... Yeah, it's cellular dehydration. Yeah, it's, it's not, not like the water like, you drink. Right. Like, that has, like, very little to do with this type of hydration. This is like your cells are being less efficient mm-hmm. because they don't have enough water. It reduces, not only reduces the amount of water you make, but also um, it slows the 
the spinning head so it slows how much ATP you make. And when so you're okay. making less ATP. And um, slowing down your motor. When you're, yeah, when you have so you're deuterium. you're doing less. When you have high amounts of deuterium, yeah. you're lowering the amount of ATP production. It's hard to say, like, what that's going to do, but yeah, so when you lower, yeah, It ATP means you're production. lowering future levels, too, because you're not producing as, as much energy. So if you deuterium deplete, you're going to uh, raise the amount of ATP you can make, that's awesome. which is important for exercise. So it's like, yeah, you if don't you want to exercise and beat yourself up because you like those endorphins and things, like then deuterium deplete. Great, your body can handle it. And some of the early studies on like athletic performance are showing that um, athletes that have lowered their like have low deuterium um, recover a lot faster. They produce far less lactic acid. Um, but let's talk about red light real quick. Uh, red light mobilizes and moves hydrogen. It changes the properties of water. Um, the optical properties and how it uh, polarizes light. It changes the viscosity and it makes it more fluid and dynamic. Um, water is a red light chromophore in that it's capable of storing a massive amount of red and infrared light. Red light and infrared light stimulate the mitochondria, which means red light from sunlight is helping your body deplete deuterium naturally. Um, the ATPA's nanomotors work, uh, are supposed to work uh, 100% efficiency with red and infrared light, which means it's actually the only thing in the universe that we know works at 100% efficiency and when it's producing energy, um, doesn't emit or lose any heat. Um, so with red light, you're able to recycle more hydrogen through the ATPs, making more water and ATP. When you work out, do you think it makes sense to work out indoors under artificial lights, which slows the ATPA's nanomotors, or to work out outdoors in 42% red and infrared light. Pepper just joined us at the table for a little bit. <laughs> we'll Pepe. allow it. We'll allow it. Hey, she's so cute. Hi, Pepper. Hey, don't, sweetie. Don't excite her. We're trying to get her to sleep. She looks cute just looking she's over She's just like the putting table. her chin on the table. <laughs> Next, we'll talk about ratios of deuterium. Well, I was going to say, yeah, let's talk about ratios of deuterium and then also talk about like how one would first increase deuterium and then two, deplete deuterium. Yeah. So the ratios of deuterium in the ocean are 155 parts per million. Um, that's 6,600 um, regular hydrogen um, to every one deuterium, mm -hmm. which doesn't sound like much. Um, but it actually is like so it in your body you have I mean if your blood your blood's right around 150 parts per million and there's actually more deuterium parts per million than calcium or magnesium like if you how they you know calculate what's sure. in your blood so yeah. there's actually a lot of deuterium compared to other minerals and stuff in your blood mm -hmm. um, and well, then, what's hard is like we, our environment is at higher levels of, de of deuterium than when we evolved. Right. So at caveman times, they were 10 to 15 parts per million lower than we are now. Right. And, that's and so crazy. that means that we're just like, we are already at a, a, an elevated deuterium level. So deuterium ratios, yeah, they're, like she said, is up 10 to 15% from what they were. No, 10 parts per million. Parts per million compared to what it was. Um, 10 to 20,000 years ago, and we know that from, like... Volcanic. Vi volcanic ash. Yeah. Um, and they... That's... Uh, already puts us at, like, a... Biological greater, disadvantage to the cavemen. Yeah. And... So Plus, they you have to add on, like, They could have lived longer society. with less diseases. Right. And these deuterium ratios change with the hydrological cycles on the Earth which has to do with the sun intensity. It has to do with global warming. And we're um, in like not a the solar weakening right yeah, now, Yeah, not right? the global warming like people talk about with CO2, but just how the climate changes naturally. Yeah. There are a lot of factors that play into the varying deuterium levels on Earth. It has to do with the different melting and boiling points of water and deuterium. Both evaporate and condense at varying temperatures depending on altitude. It's very possible that our abuse of wireless devices is raising or will raise deuterium levels globally. What happens 
um, to the hydrological cycles when you microwave the Earth with 20,000 5G wireless satellites that blanket the entire globe in microwave radiation. Uh, microwaves work by vibrating water, water molecules, which creates heat. My guess is it'll cause global deuterium ratios to go up. And f- or to be cool. also ratios on the Earth change from where you are. So the ocean's the highest at 155 parts mm-hmm. per million. And then as you go higher in altitude or higher in latitude, deuterium ratios go down. Yeah. So water from higher latitudes or higher altitudes are better for your health. Because they're lower in deuterium. Um, if you go south to like the equator. Or Fiji. Um, it's going to be higher in deuterium. Yeah. If you're lower to the, if you're at the coast, it's going to be worse. Mm-hmm. Um, some of the worst water in the world is Australia because of the ozone. Yeah. Um, the hole in the ozone has changed their water system and um, has deuterium enriched the water that the entire um, population is drinking. Yeah. yeah, so if you live in Australia, it probably makes sense to drink imported water mm-hmm. or um, deuterium depleted water. But imported water from Europe, you know, like your Pellegrinos, your Boss, whatever Evian. water you can get. Um, I wouldn't drink anything that's coming from Australia, filtered water in any way, bottled water in any way. Yeah. You're going to, yeah, it'll be worth your money to spend your money on really good water there. California too. Mm-hmm. But um, I wouldn't even eat, you know, produce. that's where, yeah, I wouldn't eat produce in Australia for the most part. I would be yeah, doing really serious deuterium protocols because, I mean, they do have high rates of cancer, highest rates of skin cancer. Mm-hmm. Um, they are early adopters to 5G, so mm-hmm. it's kind of interesting to see what will happen to them because mm-hmm. the theory is that 5G will cause us to collect a lot more deuterium, which will make their situation worse. worse. Um, so drinking really good water is going to be key these first these few years yeah. as 5G rolls out and we're kind of guinea pigs to what's happening. And as far as drinking water goes, um, the higher, like the more northern latitude the water comes from, the more deuterium depleted it is going to be. Theoretically. Um, theoretically, yeah. yeah. Especially if it's like mountain melt. And us, or... we, we drink a glacial melt water from Minnesota. Like we get a gallon of it. Yeah. Or it's so like that's glacial aquifer, yeah. Um, in the winter, it probably makes sense to drink a higher quality um, glacial melt water where summer like it's boss. not going to matter as much because you're getting More a UV lot of the sun and, and stuff. But yeah. if you're working downtown um, in an office in a high EMF environment um, or you're circadian it. disrupted, it will make sense. It makes more sense. Like if, or if we're traveling, it makes yeah. more sense to drink a boss like just to get a little bit lower. We loved traveling on Iceland Air because they give you free um and it's just Icelandic water. <laughs> yeah, I love that. that awesome. But that's just yeah. So Iceland has really good water. Yeah, and they do have good health. So mm-hmm. that's another thing. They have really good health. And there. they're super northern. So and, and they have a volcano. That's another thing. We yeah, because it into. changes the magnetic frequency of the land that they live on. Um. But so water we drink. Right now, because it's summer, we drink Pellegrino. It's, and we we're not, drink it's not like deuterium depleted. So, tap water is going to be around 145 to 150 parts per million, probably. Mm-hmm. I'm editing this in because we forgot to talk about fluoride. I forgot how many people still drink tap water and fluoridated water. Stay away from all tap water. Um, there's fluoride and all sorts of other things you don't want to ingest besides it being high in deuterium. Um, fluoride is an issue because it's a dielectric blocker and you know even that word's a little bit above my head but what it means is it um, discharges DC electrical current stored in the water um, in your cells uh, which is not a good thing because we use that DC electric current to regenerate um, you know our body our tissue um, and that's the Really, the goal is to increase the electric charge in stored in water, and um, this is constantly changing, which is known as a dielectric constant. So, deuterium depleted water in your cells 
can up, be upward of 160, um, where you know regular water somewhere around 78, and fluoride lowers that number. So and this changes how light's polarized in your cell. It's changing a lot of things that have dramatic effects on your biology. So I just take a stance of you need to absolutely stay away from fluoridated water. Um, it's not helping your teeth. Uh, it's not doing anything beneficial for you. It's hurting your health, especially the older you get. Um, it's really it's disconnecting you from the sun and allowing it, it makes it harder to get benefits from sunlight and all these other things you're doing. We drink aquafina. Obviously, like the coasts are going to be worse, so it makes more sense if you live in California or to drink bottles. towards the coast to drink um, high quality yeah. water, not even like filtered reverse osmosis water from the area. Right. You want to get imported waters, in, yeah. my, in my opinion at least in those areas. But if you're young and you have really good mitochondria, then it's not going to be as big a deal. Yeah. Um, and then when you really, the deuterium depleted waters that are like 80 parts per million or 25 parts per million, um, you can water those down to be more like 105, yeah. 120, which what I would do if I was using it most Seems likely. Seems like more acceptable level. If I had a disease, I would probably do... 80 parts per million and then I know you have to be really careful to use the 25 parts per million and I wouldn't use that unless you're working with um, a doctor yeah like, like Dr. Lazarus think of it and, as a prescription yeah um, but you can always water those down too those bottles are like I think they're like 10 bucks a bottle mm -hmm. I've never drank deuterium depleted water because it'd be a complete waste of money I think for us yeah I'm interested in it it might be more interesting like if we're in a case where we're circadian disrupted, we just traveled across Europe, like to Europe. Yeah. Um, or if you were trying to adapt, keto adapt or something, you might adapt easier by doing... Um, Potentially. Deuterium depleted water. Because of what it's doing to the TCA cycle. Yeah. That's too complex to talk about right now. But um, if... The older you get and the sicker you are, the more it makes sense to drink deuterium depleted water yeah. because you're actually pulling protons from the water you drink, which is extracellular fluid. Yeah. You have intracellular fluid, and if you're really healthy, you're not going to use really any of the water that you drink. For um, intracellular. Mm -hmm. Right. But it will change. You'll collect that deuterium. Right. That's the In thing, other too, areas. if you're drinking it. Yep. Uh, if and eating it it just depends all right should we talk a little bit more about deuterium levels in the body yeah let's talk about deuterium in the body um so lazlo boros has done a lot of research research and has really been there the dd centers is where i'm getting most of this information where they're the ones really testing people so all mitochondrial diseases we consider are metabolic diseases. So somewhere probably around 90% of diseases are probably mitochondrial metabolic diseases. And when you really break it down to the smallest scale, it seems like it's deuterium that is the root cause. That's breaking everything down. Because it affects so many different Processing, things. Processing, yeah. Um, and... If you want to get better, um, pretty much any disease. So like if you have, or if you have depression, anxiety, autoimmune disease, um, arthritis, we say cancer a lot in this podcast, but really you can fill in the blank with any, any disease, any of these metabolic diseases, yeah. any issue and, that yeah. any modern disease, um, obesity, uh, diabetes, yeah. but all and of these things... And it's not to, like, minimize or... Yeah. All of these things go away when you lower your deuterium ratios in your body. So if you're at 155, you're not going to be around very long. You, yeah. Um, Dr. Laszlo was at 145 when he had cancer. Mm-hmm. And that was his and highest 
He level. did the deuterium protocol where he, ate, I mean, he now also just eats a lot of fat, mm-hmm. deuterium depleted fats. He has a little bit of protein, mm-hmm. but it sounds like he does a lot of fat. He only drinks deuterium depleted water, but very little. Very little. But he, he does coffee, which is deuterated. Not sure what he thinks his levels are at now. I'm going to guess, like, I think the sweet spot is to be under 120. Yeah. You don't, 130 I, is the threshold. I don't think you want to go too low, or there's some people that go, like, they're saying in the 70s, but it, oh, God. I don't know how accurate their measurements are. I'm not ready to go out and get tested. No. And It's so early on too in much. the research. Um, our body produces 105 part per, per million water. Mm-hmm. So it's very deuterium depleted. That's yep. extremely deuterium depleted. For and that's that's probably the level I would aim to be at is around 105 to 120. That'll be a good sweet spot. If I did have a cancer or yeah, something serious life, life threatening that I was yeah. worried about, I would consider it. I would consider and I would work with them and I would use deuterium depleted yeah. water. Yeah. But really I think the key message with deuterium is to do all of these things to lower your levels naturally because our bodies are um, made to deplete deuterium yeah. when they're working naturally. Mm-hmm. So, and that is, you know, from sleeping well, from all of these things that improve mitochondrial function. That from we've been talking about on our... Increasing melatonin. Remember to Phil's use, top 10 list? <laughs> yeah. So wake up with the sun. Yeah. All the things I keep re- reiterating it on yeah, this podcast. The checklist. Um, but if your levels are high, you know, above 130, that's when issues start to show up. Yeah. And the higher you get, the more... And Dr. Laszlo said in his research, there has never been a time where someone has been above 130 and there hasn't been an underlying issue somewhere in their body. Yeah. Like, that's crazy. Um, yeah, so another way to detect, the way I like... Or another way to detect deuterium in the body is with an MRI. And if you know what you're looking for, um, the light um, deuterium has... So it's something called the kinetic isotope effect. And it changes pretty much how light is reflected, refracted, um, how it's scattered. So if you know what you're looking for um, and you ask... So normally... Normally, MRIs will filter the noise out created from these from deuterium, but if you know, like, some people know what to look for, and they can go back and see, like, look at cancers, and it's like, oh, that area is really high in deuterium. Oh, wow. Or, because deuterium immobilizes, like, a thousand hydrogen protons, mm-hmm. or hydrogen molecules, <laughs> so it gives... Deuterium will give a fingerprint in the MRI image. Mm -hmm. And if you have, like, fatty liver, it'll show up that... It'll light up that you have a lot of deuterium in your liver. Wow. If you have, you know, heart issues, if you have brain issues, it'll be... Your brain will be what's heavy in deuterium. That's a big link. Um, And the organs that are the most um, metabolic... The intensive, or yep. the ones that require the most energy, your the brain most mitochondria, and heart, yeah. Yeah. brain, heart, and liver. Those have the most mitochondria. Those are the things that are going to fail first when you start collecting deuterium. Mm-hmm. And, and what's like the biggest rise? Like mental health, dementia, Alzheimer's, um, heart failure. Yeah, and it'll all show up in different ways. Diabetes. Yeah. yeah. I mean, oh, I, I guess everything's on the rise. I can't even give a list. Um, it's, all, it's all overwhelming. So for someone like me, I, I just, I do all these natural things to try and lower deuterium because, you know, it's almost like the ultimate thing you can do for your health. Yeah. I like for, the analogy, like at work, a lot of times when there's issues, you want to do root cause analysis. You want to find the actual lowest link that's causing this problem. You want to fix that. Because then everything upstream fixes mm-hmm. itself. Yeah. Because if, if you only fix, like, really high up in the chain of events and that root cause is still broken, six months down the line, 
two weeks down the line, you're going to end up back at the same the same point. Yeah. And so you can't get smaller than deuterium. Deuterium and protium are literally what it comes down to. Yeah, these are the things that like blew my mind to really like, be like... I mean, I guess you could get smaller. Like some physicist is going to get up my ass about that. But like... We can get into... Photons. The smallest scales in the mitochondria would be neutrinos. Yeah. But... Which we can get there and we will. So pause. Put a pin in it. Neutrinos and mitochondria. That is... I don't know if we'll ever get there. Because there's no proof of it. There's just... Well, there's theories. Yeah. That it makes sense that they'd be Quantum. doing something yeah. to biology at the smallest scales. So we talked about deuterium levels in water. We talked about deuterium levels in the body. Now let's talk about deuterium levels in food. Talk about deuterium levels in food. Yep. We could talk about deuterium depleted foods first. Mm -hmm. And it's kind of the foods... It's one reason I'm focused... Well, I, I would first say the ketogenic diet, carnivore diet, these high fat, low carbohydrate diets... Are deuterium I'm kind of on their team because they are deuterium depleted in that... They're eating a lot of animal fats, and they're eating um, a reduced amount of carbs. Mm -hmm. So carbohydrates tend to have 150, 155 parts per million deuterium, so higher deuterium, whereas animal fats, olive oil, coconut oil, um, seafood, uh, fats in seafood, mm -hmm. tend to be... Um, 105 to about 125, 20 parts per million. Yeah. And that's, so fats are deuterium depleted and the water you make will come from the ratios of deuterium in your food. Mm -hmm. So if you eat Twinkies and junk food and... You're consuming a lot of deuterium. That, yeah, so like everyone knows junk food, processed food. There's all bad these theories of why they're bad. Processed foods are bad. Chemicals are bad. But why it um, actually is bad. At the smallest scale, it's deuterium. These foods are extremely high in deuterium. If mm -hmm. you want to get cancer, you eat Twinkies because they're using hydrogenated oils mm -hmm. that they bubble hydrogen gas through the fats that uh, deuterate the um, Oil. oils. So their hydro hydrogenated oils mm -hmm. are extremely high in deuterium, up in like the 200s, 250s. That's sort of like the highest deuterium My gosh. foods. And there's no re there's no surprise that they made people sick. Yeah. And it's all these like sh foods with long long shelf lives that mm -hmm. are gonna be extremely high deuterium. So sh yeah, sugar will be right around probably around what most carbohydrates are, um, that are built by plants. Yeah. Where a high fructose corn syrup is built in a lab and it's processed and it's from corn. Mm -hmm. Um. It's going to be a lot higher in deuterium. Oh, God, yeah. So I've been seeing this thing go around on social media showing a fructose molecule mm -hmm. from high fructose corn syrup and then from fruit. Mm -hmm. And, you know... They look identical. The high, yeah, they look identical, but really the hydrogen molecules are much more deuterated on the... Um, yeah. High fructose corn syrup. And it makes sense. People know But you're looking a at difference. a simplified model of the molecule. But so, of course, it's easy to how many say that. How many chemists or whatever want, I've heard, like, there's no difference between sugar and high fructose corn syrup. Like, just trying to make the people who yeah. are calling... Well, they're probably not looking at the ratios of deuterium in the two different... And it kind of goes with, like, the calories in, calorie out. doesn't matter. Yeah. And it's like, no, these calories are very different. Uh, neither, both are not good for you. Um, but the high fructose corn syrup is way worse. Yeah. And we definitely feel a different effect on God, our gut yeah. when we drink. Like, oh my God. We don't touch high fructose corn syrup, but when we do, man. My entire life, I've told people I was allergic to it because of how sick it made me. Same with aspartame. Yeah. So there's something to that. And then we use, so if we were using a sweetener, we use maple syrup from lo like mm -hmm. a local maple syrup mm -hmm. or honey. Mm -hmm. That's pretty much it. I mean, sometimes we have sugar, but yeah. that's not from our latitude. No, it's splurging. Um, but also, like, a raw sugar cube is built by... Nature. Nature. Yes. Or a fruit is also built by nature, so it's not going to be over that, like, 
dangerous Ridiculous level that's level. gonna break your body. Yeah. It's gonna be more around the 150. And I think that's what we want to hammer home is like these things aren't bad. They just have to be in a natural balance. Like we've been preaching since podcast number one of like, mama likes sugar. So we have blueberries and, but we try and do it from nature. Mm -hmm. I've always tried to be like that because I had, I was very sensitive growing up. And so high fructose corn syrup does not agree with me. Yeah. Made my stomach hurt really bad. So it's, yeah, they're unnatural. They're also lacking like information that's buried in from sunlight Mm -hmm. in these anything time you process foods you remove this information that's buried in water so that's that's another thing sunlight from the equation which is what is essential to think it's going to be higher in deuterium and you're yeah you're adding deuterium but you're also causing a chaos of information that'll cause you to collect more deuterium too Mm -hmm. from these foods yeah Well, we've talked about how food can cause a circadian disruption. Exactly. And any circadian disruption is going to cause, in my, like, this is just on a... Gut instinct. On a gut instinct. Yeah. Like, I think that'll cause you to collect more deuterium. Eating foods out of season. So, a banana. So, we could get into, like, so we got processed foods are high in... Deuterium. deuterium, But also... Supplements. Foods on this planet are different too based yeah. off where they grow the water supply they're like growing. the lowest in, de- de- in deuterium is grass and so that's why if you eat grass fed animal meat and fat you're eating a very low deuterium source because what they eat is the lowest in, in deuterium yep and then but then if you eat a diet high in fruit that the fruit and the seed is where the plant stores most of the deuterium Yep. So when you're eating fruits and seeds and things, those are, and beans. Or like wheat. So yep. the parts of the plants that we eat in our diet tend to be the reproductive part of the plants. Yep. And um, these parts tend to, that's where the plants shuttle deuterium because that's the part that. You need deuterium to grow. Yeah. Yeah. And I mean, that's one reason, another connection I've made, like, that's kind of clicked with me is lectin and gluten, two things that are really people are sensitive to yeah. with autoimmunity. Um, these things are extremely high in deuterium; they're mm-hmm. almost all deuterated. And again, deuterium is like a glue. It ca- it's like create, coffee. Coffee's but high think in of like gluten, what it's doing in cooking. It's creating like these yeah. strong bonds that cr- allow the bread to rise. Yeah. So it makes sense to me, like. Yeah, one of the properties of gluten and what makes it bad for people is it's extremely high in deuterium. deuterium. Yeah. Which if you're if you have everything right in your environment and everything, then you can handle that. But yeah. I clearly didn't. But who knows? There's probably other reasons yeah. you're sensitive to gluten. I mean, it's not saying like that's just one aspect of it. Mm-hmm. Um vegetables also that are GMO, right? Yeah, so let's talk GMOs real quick. GMOs are going to be higher in deuterium because they grow faster and they grow bigger. That's the the majority of GMOs and what they do. Yeah, so, and what deuterium is good for is or growth the way, and metabolism. Not even GMOs, but also how we've selected all of our produce mm-hmm. to be like bigger and... That's GMO. That's grow like faster. Cross-breeding. It doesn't necessarily have to be GMO though, but a lot of the GMO specific, like GMO is usually the um, Monsanto. Yeah, pesticide. But those are going to be really like, I'd stay away from those for a lot of reasons, but they are going to be higher in deuterium just to like. Have chemicals on it. I mean, they're going to be, have glyphosate and other things. I, I just try and avoid produce from California too. Um, which knocks off a lot of produce because it mostly comes from California. Or we get a lot of Mexico up here. Yeah, Mexico. I actually would rather have Mexico than California. Same. Uh, we don't have wine from California either. Nope. Because I drink it only from Europe. Pesticides and the water that they're using is high in deuterium. Mm-hmm. Uh, we drink water from, or we drink it from Europe or Argentina, mm-hmm. Melbex. Mm-hmm. For that, so, kind of the same reason we avoid produce from those areas. Mm-hmm. Um, 
we want to really eat produce from our, our environment. environment. So like vegetables, I want it from my garden. I haven't I didn't grow too much this year, mostly just herbs. So, you know, I We go to the farmers market though. And whatever's at the farmers market. If it's not at the farmers market then we don't you should eat it. really eat I'm eating meat and butter and fat because those are the things I can get local year yeah. round. Fish. Um, winter, I'm eating a lot of squash and pumpkin, which are deuterium depleted. Yeah, and you can eat in the winter what you would be able to harvest. Carbs normally. that are lower in deuterium. Yeah. But, you know, sweet potatoes and potatoes, I don't binge on them. I like mm-hmm. them. Yeah. But I wouldn't be eating those if I had a metabolic disease no, because yeah. they're higher in deuterium. They collect a lot. Yeah. Um, I don't think about it too Rice much. Rice is super high in deuterium. Rice is going to be high in deuterium. Sadly, and it's like my biggest crutch. Um... But, yeah, you know, sometimes the only thing to eat is chipotle. I so know. I eat, I eat the meat and then... Beans are high in deuterium. Yeah. But vegetables, you know, I wouldn't... I don't consider vegetables like a health food. Um, Unless they're in season. And I but cook you're, them. There's yeah. so many, like... And you're allergic to a lot of them. Leafy so greens you're... are not high in deuterium, but... I have to cook them, and there's a lot of reasons not to eat them other than that. Like, they're high in oxalates. That's what I react to. Uh, Yeah, I just don't consider them a health food, but Some people really like them, though, so. Whatever. If you don't react to them, power to you. Yeah. I'm not too concerned about food. Just stay away from processed foods and Mm kind of have this mind of, mindset of what's high and what's low in deuterium. So, like, I eat most of my foods are high in fat. Low in sugar. And like a lot of sausage, bacon. Eggs. Mm -hmm. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I used to gorge on vegetables. Oh, uh, my God. He used to make purees. Because we did the keto diet for a long time, bulletproof kind of style. Where it was like We did a lot of veggies, just a lot of fat in the veggies. Yeah. But I feel a lot better just crossing out the veggies and eating mostly just meat. My... Gut, it feels so much better. Like, I'll eat veggies, but I almost consider them, like, uh, a questionable food, you know, like... Or just, like, a little snack, a garnish. Yeah. Yeah. Like... Not the main, not not the main addition I'm not gonna force my kid to eat vegetables. Yeah. Um, let's see. And then fruit is also high in deuterium. Yeah, I said that. And... It's also, they're grown at lower latitudes. So if you're going to eat fruit, Do it eat when it when it's, it's growing local. in your environment, yeah. local. It'll be way different for you than if you're eating a banana, pineapple. Um, yeah. Like, we don't eat that ever because it doesn't grow here. Coconuts are deuterium depleted, but the coconut water it's is high. high in deuterium. So I used to drink coconut water because we were all told it was healthy, but... It's we actually high in deuterium. I think it's a good way to actually give yourself more of a hangover. Yeah. There's like, how does it hangover cure? Because it has all these minerals Electrolytes. and potassium and stuff. Yeah. But you're loading on deuterium on your mitochondria that were stressed from drinking alcohol. Alcohol. Poison. It actually. seems like a real, it's, it's not a good idea. Yeah. yeah. Uh, but yeah, supplements are also high in deuterium because, well, first they're grown in a lab, but also... It's yep. just like anything processed process. in the lab <laughs> will cut will add deuterium. Um, okay. When you look at an egg, so eggs, the egg yolk is one hundred and fifteen parts per million, mm-hmm. where the egg white is one hundred forty parts per million. So it has higher deuterium. Yeah, I don't like the white. Yeah, um, I eat about whoa, two egg yolks for every egg white. Yeah. Um, and I eat a lot of raw egg yolks for that reason too. Like, if I'm gonna go out. In the Lamb sun, is so. like one of the most. Yeah, for meats. The least deuterium depleted. Yeah. One of the, lamb is my favorite source of meat. Yeah. And then grass. But then fed fish is pretty low as well. Fish is gonna be really low just because, um, the whole Cold food web in fish the ocean. Especially. Yeah, the food web in the ocean is deuterium depleted. Yeah. From true. because, from the very bottom. Up, yeah, it's eating, everything is, yeah, for the most part, unless it's eating, you know, unless you buy the factory, the yeah. farm raised fish, yeah, then you're feeding it soy and corn and these things that <laughs> are high in deuterium, yeah, yeah, you don't eat your 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 cows that are fed that, and you don't want to eat your fish that right. are fed these soy and corn and unnatural yeah. things, yeah, um, for their diet. 
Totally. Let me think. Should we talk about the deuterium? Okay, so we've talked about, like, how it's different in all these different things. Um, how would you deplete deuterium? So uh, how you would increase yeah, deuterium is, is you would stay in... You would, how you, like, can increase deuterium is by not getting sunlight, by not getting... Um, by eating processed foods, by not... Yeah, yeah, we need to talk about this. So, um, things, pretty much everything on our list on the first podcast, the top 10, which was ended up being Will help things. you deplete deuterium because and that's how you protect mitochondrial health. That's really what our focus and why we're doing this podcast. This is almost like the reasoning behind everything we do from like the crazy lights in our house to really controlling circadian rhythm, worrying about EMF, uh... All of these things mm-hmm. are because we're trying to we we have protect this, ourselves, and it's almost like learning that. What's this? you learn fat's bad for you? What do you do in reaction to that? So we learn deuterium is actually the issue. So what health changes do we make to deuterium deplete? And my focus is on circadian rhythm because it's, it's not the, the deuterium way. that's bad. It's Deuterium in the wrong places yeah. at the wrong time in the, in the wrong ratios. And nature controls for this at a crazy level that we can't replicate. So mm-hmm. it's just gain my appreciation for nature and allowing like everything in nature has been designed to work in unison and life has been created to deplete deuterium. But mm-hmm. for whatever reason, I mean, it's pretty... That makes sense to me. We've lost this connection to what I call nature, mm-hmm. like, or circadian rhythm. And well, because we have a modern world now. We have all this non native light yeah. that's hitting us and causing chaos that's disrupting these processes that control where deuterium is. Mm-hmm. And again, like, deuterium is, I view it as, um, and hydrogen is the ones and zeros that control the biophysics of our biology and I think the biggest thing is circadian rhythm where Dr. Laszlo's Boros is hard on the diet Mm -hmm. and hard on the deuterium depleted water Mm -hmm. where Jack Cruz and where I am focused on is sunlight and circadian rhythm and getting good sleep is a way to deplete your deuterium Mm -hmm. um having high melatonin levels and using that melatonin and protecting your melatonin from light Mm -hmm. um, allows you to repair your mitochondria at night and get rid of this deuterium in your gut it allows you to shed the lining of your gut um, that tends to collect a lot of deuterium and needs to replace itself every 24 to 48 hours Mm -hmm. and what it's doing is you're pooping out all this deuterium. Yeah. But if you're not, one way to tell that your circadian disrupted is you're not pooping consistently every morning. Mm -hmm. Just really good. Like you wake up, watch the sunrise. And you should have the urge. And then either before you eat or after, you should have the urge and take a nice dump. Yeah. (laughs) And if you don't, your circadian disrupted. If I go to Europe or like another state out of our time zone, I notice for about two days... That's messed up on me. Yeah. Um, and how I get it back on is watching the sunrise. So yeah. that is, that's my opinion on how you would get rid of an autoimmune disease or or how you would leaky de- gut or all how you these would things. People are in general is you would circadian rhythm. That's yes. the number one thing. And then after that is sunlight because sunlight is. One, you're getting more benefits from sunlight once you start depleting deuterium. Mm-hmm. So you start moving this needle and you start getting more benefits because you start making more of this structured water right. that allows you to bury more of this light that you get when you go outside. Mm-hmm. And then you start making more and more water. More and more efficient. And you start building a bigger and bigger battery, which is what we call cell redox, which is the electric potential in your cell mm-hmm. to create energy and do everything that it needs to to control all your biological processes and it's down to the water you're making from your mitochondria and that happens from being deuterium depleted and the more water you make the more deuterium depleted you become overall yeah and if you're sick of stuff you can start with diet 
start eating these low deuterium diets. Carnivore, yeah. But on top of diet, you've got to be doing these circadian things because yeah. deuterium is not necessarily bad, but um, this gets back into the blue light photoreceptor that we talked about on our last podcast, melanopsin. Mm-hmm. And we call it melanopsin dysfunction when um, this photoreceptor gets destroyed and separated from vitamin A. You get this chaos in your body with your photoreceptors. So to learn more about melanopsin and the blue light photoreceptor and how this affects um, our circadian rhythm and all these things that are tied to it, go back and listen to more details on our last podcast on podcast three. Uh, yeah, episode three. But just know that blocking bl- this artificial is, blue light. This also affects deuterium because it's affecting um, uncoupling protein number two, which is also known as uncoupling enzyme two in the mitochondrial membrane Mm -hmm. and this controls deuterium in and out of the mitochondria and the mitochondria it's controlling pretty much cell growth and um mitosis no what is the apoptosis okay mitosis yeah it's controlling cell mitosis yeah you said that yeah yeah which is it's create so it's controlling the growth and division of your cells um, through utilizing deuterium. Yeah. And I'm sure there's other ways that deuterium gets controlled by circadian mechanisms. But right. That's just one that I know about. And when you lose control of that, it causes chaos because the um, deuterium, when it gets into the mitochondrial matrix... It has a really strong magnetic field, and it does something called nuclear compression. And that nuclear compression releases low-frequency UV light, and our cells communicate with the low-frequency UV light. Yeah. So if that's not controlled, um, tightly controlled... Then communication's lose, out of control. And yeah, you lose control of information. Yeah. Um, so that and just needs to be tightly controlled. the flow of information is controlled. critical. And again, this sounds absolutely insane, but it's like... That's just me, like, that's why I'm in awe of what our body is actually doing at, like, a quantum level. Mm -hmm. Because it's communicating and working with light. Yeah. It's crazy. (laughs) when deuterium gets messed up, you lose that information. And there's a lot more chaos than you want to know from just a molecule or, yeah, a molecule with twice the mass of what hydrogen is. Yeah. So the circadian mechanisms control deuterium in your cells and when Mm -hmm. that's when that's screwed up and you have chaos um you get mitochondrial dysfunction because you're collecting deuterium yeah so the worst things you could do is eat a processed if you want cancer eat a processed food diet Mm -hmm. high in twinkies or supplements or even a vegetarian diet that's non-seasonal which most are doing with um all the fake meats and Mm -hmm. the soy and stuff like that and eating bananas in the winter Mm -hmm. you're collecting deuterium but you're you're you could do this if you were living in an area with a lot of sun you're circadian you're you're living on the land you're waking up with the sun yeah you're outside all day but if you're someone who it's indoors all day stares at a screen lives downtown mm-hmm. and is a really high emf area you, need you look to be at your screen a de- a you watch diet. tv netflix every night yeah you're going to get really screwed up and it's going to become a bigger issue in 5g because it creates more of this melanopsin more dysfunction. Chaos, yeah so you're going to collect more deuterium in the cells and you're going to have more mitochondrial dysfunction you become more dehydrated yeah and so what I would recommend, this is just, just kind of laying out what you can do to protect yourself from 5G. And it gives you a reason why you really need to protect your skin and eyes. Because what's happening at the smallest scale with deuterium from the circadian disruption. Yeah. Um, Did you want to talk about deuterium at the mitochondrial level? I think we talked about it kind of at the beginning. Okay. I, I might go into more detail at another time. Um, let's see what else we wrote down. 
other effects of deuterium? Like um, how it can impact gut health? Uh, yeah, so everything can be deuterated. So when you're higher levels in deuterium and it's in the wrong places, you're also deuterating DNA, which is changing the 3D structure of DNA and what it's doing in your body. Yeah. So that's one thing I would be worried about is um, higher levels of deuterium affecting your mitochondria or uh, your, DNA. your DNA. And then it also um, can deuterate proteins, and it changes the way these proteins fold. It changes the 3D structure of the protein. And when you change the 3D structure of the protein, you change how it resonates mm -hmm. and how it's doing its job. Mm -hmm. You can pretty much make a protein dysfunctional. Mm -hmm. And these proteins are light antennas, and you don't want these to be deuterated. So yeah. um, deuterium can be in higher mm -hmm. ratios. You know, you could have deuterium in the skin level, which affects how you absorb sunlight mm -hmm. and how you make um, vitamin D out of cholesterol because cholesterol can be deuterated. Mm -hmm. So there's a lot to learn here, but there's a lot of things deuterium is affecting besides just the mitochondria. Mm -hmm. And the gut health, we had talked about how... Um, you're, helps, so like, your your bacteria actually thrive off of deuterium, yeah, and causes them to grow, which isn't necessarily a, a bad good, thing because they're helping really... you deplete the food you eat. So yeah. that's almost what your gut's designed to do, is to deplete the deuterium um, before it gets to your mitochondria. Mm -hmm. Which that's just one step into deuterium depletion is your your bacteria are digesting and using this mm -hmm. um, deuterium. But, and then your gut's also absorbing it, but it's supposed to replace itself every 24 hours. And if it doesn't, the... And it's supposed to accept a certain level of... There's deuterium. mitochondria in your gut. And yeah. when they get deuterated, they're going to expand anything and lose energy. And as they expand, they become leakier. Yeah. Um, anything that loses energy expands. Mm -hmm. So I, I just think this has a huge impact on gut health. Um, a lot to learn here. Jack Cruz, I think, is really laying out this year gut health and stuff. Yeah. And that's something I'm really fascinated in seeing how this plays out, how he lays the story Do out. you want to talk about how overworking out can cause issues? Yeah, so one reason I wouldn't work out when you're overweight and sick, which that's the first thing people are like... Oh, I'm, I'm overweight because I don't work out enough. And then they beat themselves up or someone's unhealthy. They and just have like, like a, run five a heart miles attack. A day. Like the way to get healthy again is to run and get in shape. Right. Like that's what we've been sold in movies and all the fitness people. Yeah. Like get just in shape, beat yourself hard. up. But you got to do tearing to plead first mm -hmm. because you're... You're putting too much pressure on yourself. When you work out, you're spinning these nanomotors faster. Mm -hmm. These nanomotors that get broken by your deuterium. And the deuterium is stored in your fat. Mm -hmm. So I would be deuterium depleting other ways. Um, I, I forgot to add cold tubbing is huge. For oh, deuterium yeah. Depletion. So get in a cold tub in the sunlight. That's like... The two best things. I guess I should say what I would do instead of working out would be the exact same thing I would do if I had cancer. And it would be moving to a higher quantum environment or at least visiting it. Mm -hmm. So that's why we take trips to Mexico. And yeah. when I say quantum, like... Quantum yield, meaning it gets The strong amount of sunlight UV. you get. And yeah. then also the magnetic field of the Earth is stronger in, Mex in, in, in Mexico, Mexico, which is we love to go to. Yeah. I would go to a beach on Mexico. I would have perfect circadian rhythm. I'd be wearing blue blockers. I'd go to bed with the sunset. I would. I love when we're in Mexico. I would eat as early as possible dinner, and I would eat a lot of seafood DHA to get more um, to turn this DC electrical current from sunlight into, mm -hmm. or turn sunlight into a DC electrical current. And then I would be grounded on the beach. I'd watch every sunrise, and then that's what I would do to also lose weight. And mm -hmm. I'd be doing cold tubs in the sun. Yeah. Those are, that's what I would be doing to deuterium deplete to cure cancer. Not saying like this is just a hypothetical like Yeah. I'm not giving any advice. <laughs> we are not doctors. <laughs> yeah. But like 
this is what I would do on top of anything else if I had any issue that I yeah. I didn't know how to get rid of anxiety, depression, all of these things. I, yeah. Like I if you agree. lower deuterium in your brain, things are just gonna go away mm-hmm. and fix themselves. Well, they found Dr. Laszlo found that if anyone that was above that threshold of 130 had some underlying issue, whether or not it was like they already knew they had cancer or they, because it was over 130, all of a sudden they found out that actually they had X, Y, and Z going on. But if you can keep your deuterium levels below 130, no one has had any issues when their deuterium levels have been below that, which is kind of crazy. Yeah, everything, or 120 is kind of like... Safe. When you can't get cancer. But right. if you're at 130, cancer is just met- not metastasizing. Yeah, it's not, it's it's not, not expanding. Exactly. Do you want to talk about our last topic, which is deuterium on Mars? Let's see. I said drinking too much water is a bad idea. I wrote that as the next thing. Mm. So I think, strangely, Dr. Laszlo has like, he says he doesn't drink any water except his morning coffee that he makes with deuterium depleted water. Yeah. Which I think... Even though coffee is deuterated. I'm not to that level, but I guess consciously I'm thinking like, there's just this fad that I keep seeing like, drink more water, drink more water, drink a gallon of water. Yeah. And I think it's a bad idea, but you're drinking a little... I mean, this water is higher in deuterium, but then what you're making Mm -hmm. from fat and the foods you eat. Mm -hmm. So I think it's Because we are getting hydrogen. We are getting water from our food. I think it's a good sign, though, if you need less water. Mm -hmm. I think if you're in a shitty environment, you're going to need more water, and the quality of that water is going to matter more. Mm -hmm. If you're in a really bad environment or you're older or in rough shape, deuterium depleted in water may make sense yeah um but you gotta be smart with that don't go too low work with one of like dd centers dd double d centers Centers. dr laszlo's boros is um he's really one of one of the forefront researchers but i think it's completely silly to drink a gallon of water a day or try force yourself to drink water which I thought that I, I was think. on that page too. That oh yeah, drink more water. That but makes if you total look sense. at your dog, your dog drinks when your dog is thirsty. But our dog, we she feed like the perfect diet. Drinks yeah. water. It's you have to work crazy. her out really hard before she drinks water. So yeah. it's like, and she basically does it just to cool off. I apply that to myself. It's like if I'm working out really hard, then yeah, I feel the thirst and yes. I need water. And you like your body knows when to stop too. So I think you need. I'm trying to. I almost have an impulse to want to drink because mm-hmm. you like I want something like, in my hand to drink. Yeah, it's like an association. It's like almost. an addiction to yeah. drinking. So I'm trying. That's to That's what a lot of smokers reduce. say. They're like, I just, I just like find myself doing the motion. Yeah, and I think the more you drink, the more urge you have to drink. Totally. So I think you have to like get try and get back to like only drinking when you really feel like you need Thirsty. to drink water, and that's. That's at least what I'm experimenting. I'll let you know as as this goes what I think. Yeah, and we we most yeah we change our mind all the time on things. Um, but I guess I, I had talked about what I would do for cancer, so I wanted to touch on other methods mm-hmm. of cancer. And I'm not saying like deuterium is all and be all of cancer, but this is it's dealing with the smallest scales, and it explains a lot of things and. At the very least, I would be adding this to your regimen, uh, like, way, like, if you're doing anything to treat your cancer, mm-hmm. deuterium depletion is, I think, the most promising thing I've ever seen, and it's not And Dr. Laszlo cured his own cancer this way. And they've been doing it in Hungary. It's a pharmaceutical drug for dogs, and they've cured a lot of dogs with a ketogenic diet with deuterium depletion. I'm not saying ketogenic diet is good either, because... There's a lot of cancers that you'll make worse with a ketogenic yeah. diet. So I can't give advice on that. It's so particular by person. But I think to prevent cancer, do keto diet and something from for my age, doing a keto diet and a seasonal diet mm-hmm. and conscious about how to deplete deuterium makes a lot of sense. And that's in my head of like, 
I'm not going to get a cancer. And if I do, I know I'm not scared of it because I know I can do something and I have power with mm-hmm. this deuterium. And Plus I, circadian rhythm. Also with 5G. You have like two of 5G sides and, of the coin there. I scare a lot of people with this 5G stuff and like high EMF and stuff, but you can protect yourself a little bit more by knowing this deuterium thing. Yes. And, and the circadian rhythm thing. It's going to make more sense to start eating. It makes sense to me to really focus on circadian rhythm and lowering your consumption of these high deuterium foods, eating seasonally, and doing cold tubbing to protect yourself because you're trying to deplete this deuterium so you're less sensitive to these environmental stresses. Mm -hmm. Um, But I had wrote down some supplements. I, I hate, I am against any of these people selling supplements to cure any disease because they're high in deuterium for Mm -hmm. the most part. You're going to cause mitochondrial dysfunction. This is coming from someone who used to be a huge fan of Dave Asprey, Bulletproof, and all of their products. I followed the Bulletproof diet for five years. The knowledge around deuterium radically changed my opinions. Most people in the biohacking world know of Bulletproof. Dave Asprey claims he coined the term biohacking, which he didn't. They only ma- he only made it mainstream. The word biohacking leaves a really bad taste in my mouth, and I try to avoid using it. But Bulletproof sponsors most of the large biohacking events around the world, and they host their own conference, which is one of the largest. They control the narrative in the biohacking world. They have financial incentive for people not to learn about deuterium, and it's well known that they have prevented and blocked guests from coming to their events and the events they sponsor, who talk about water, light, and deuterium. Dave wrote a book on the mitochondria, yet he doesn't mention a single thing about the water your mitochondria make or anything about deuterium. His book was written to sell you half-truths to get you to buy the products and supplements he sells. Deuterium is one of the most important things to know to improve mitochondrial function. He wants to keep this knowledge silent because it makes him and his brand look bad. His brand is based around improving mitochondrial performance, yet he sells only things that hurt the mitochondria. His supplements and coffee are high in deuterium. The people who really understand the mitochondria are throwing away their supplements and trading them for things you can't package or sell. Watching the sunrise, getting sunlight, blocking blue light, avoiding EMF, drinking good water, reconnecting with nature, and focusing on circadian rhythm. As 5G rolls out, the supplements and ideas Dave Asprey is selling become increasingly dangerous. Dave is a smart guy and knows this deuterium story. This information could help a lot of people. Only a sociopath would choose profits which hurt people instead of spreading the truth that has the potential to help a lot of people. Your pharmaceutical drugs yeah. that are curing cancer. I'm saying cure cancer, but you're like... Treat. So you're treating cancer. You're causing more mitochondrial dysfunction and you'll be collecting more deuterium mm-hmm. after taking these drugs that really destroy, that are really rough on your body. Also, not just cancer, any disease um, or illness where you have to use pharmaceutical drugs. It's like you're sick and you're trying to get better, but you're taking this drug that has crazy a high amount amounts of deuterium. of deuterium. So it's a chemical with a lot of deuterium that comes with a lot of side effects. Yeah. And... I think most people listening to this podcast already probably know, like... The overprescription of drugs that work currently. Yeah, it's like, I, I haven't taken... In a, the system of... I don't trust any prescription drugs. Like, yeah. It's... You're, you're just putting money in the pockets of the pharmaceutical companies. Yeah. And they have to design these chemicals. Well, we talked about, not like... Not really to, like, help people. I mean, yeah. there's some cases where it is, but you're... I, I don't think taking anything in your body that's higher in deuterium is a good is right. a solution to anything. Especially in our in today's environment in an increasingly high EMF, high blue light world that's breaking these other mechanisms that's breaking down everything else in our body. Like you really just gotta got gotta button up. Yeah, Be I, feel, better. I feel bad for grandparents and older generation who mm-hmm. like you can't ever convince they they're too far like you can't convince them that the pharmaceutical drugs are bad. They really I have know. them wrapped up. My grandma's up. like always in the doctor. They're going to the doctor changing for up her meds, changing up whatever. And I'm not going to step in and say anything cuz there's well, not well, anything I can Well, anything is really is like do. if they go off of all of those things, that's dangerous too. So really I want to give this information to people before they're sick because once yeah. you're sick I'm not going to reach you. You're, none of this is going to yeah. enter your head. You need to have 
a clear and mind right now hard, to understand this stuff. it's hard to feel stuff. qualified to give those people direction because we aren't qualified to give sick people direction. No. But you can, we refer, refer you to Dr. We're, Laszlo Boros, Dr. Yeah. Jack Cruz. We're about preventing getting yeah. sick. We're still young and healthy and we want to stay that way. Yeah. And help people to Agreed. stay healthy. Return to nature, people. Mm-hmm. Get rid of your stupid phone. <laughs> As it's like filming us. <laughs> so that's kind of my beef with that. Then you have juicing. A lot of people like yeah. that rapper who got shot mm-hmm. kind of made this popular where he everyone's like, oh, he was on to something with this um, curing cancer. He's doing a documentary on like a juicing vegan diet mm. and curing cancer. And it's like, and... Um, Who's the Apple guy? Steve Jobs. Steve Jobs. That's what he did when he was trying to cure his cancer. Mm -hmm. He went to like a vegan juicing type diet. Mm -hmm. And you're just pounding deuterium. Yeah. It's a horrible idea. Yeah. It's don't listen. I keep hearing this over and over. It's a really bad advice. Sounds like self-suicide. It's the last thing I would do. It's the thing I would do if I wanted to get sick. Okay, Phil. I used to work for an organic juice company, and we sold 16-ounce juices for $10 a bottle. Mm-hmm. And that's... A deuterium bomb. Yeah, deuterium bomb. And a lot of these people, like, it was a juice cleanse. Like, okay. So they would have, like, four of those a day. They'd have six. Oh, my God. So $60 a day for a week. That's how much money? I don't know what you do. <laughs> 60 times seven. Seven. So... 420? Six times seven is 42. Did I make that up? Yeah. Four hundred twenty dollars. Good job, Lynn. Yes, yeah, so they spent four hundred. You're the mental math. They would spend four hundred twenty dollars a week on juices. When it could have been water. When it could have been deuterium depleted water that yeah. would have lasted them a month, and that would actually be a, a real cleanse. Yeah. Like, and they will really, like when really people do ju- juice cleanses. Cleanse. Juice cleanses at work, they're like literally so angry, so mad, like sweaty. <laughs> yeah. Like, you don't look good. <laughs> no, I'm sure it's fine. I haven't seen that many people do juice cleanses. No, juice cleanses are ridiculous. Like, I, I was part of that world. I didn't believe in it, but I thought it was fun to just, like... Learn. Make juices and, yeah, like, it was work a small at the farmer's startup. market yeah. and stuff. Sorry, Tam, if you're listening to this, but... Well, it's not going to affect your business. It's deuterium. But yeah. you should probably start drinking deuterium depleted water. Yeah, it's against our reverse brand. reverse all the juice Sorry. you drank for the last... Five years of your life. (laughs) (laughs) Okay. Um, I mean, it's working for some people probably because they're reducing probably other things. Other things, maybe. I don't know. It's complicated. Um, The meat heals, carnivore movement, keto movement. I wrote that down. So that's interesting because it is a deuterium depleting diet. I think they're not emphasizing... It has to be grass-fed. Grass-fed enough. Yeah. Because... Um, you're eating if you're eating corn and grain fed you're just consuming the deuterium of the grain but you're still eating something that's lower in deuterium but they're a little too focused on that the food when they should be focused more on at least Why combi- the food they is should helping. be combining it with other things they yeah. should be focused more on the um, circadian rhythm blocking blue light avoiding emf um, michelle what's her name um yeah, Michelle. Michelle Peterson. Peterson. I think one thing that's interesting, so when you have a baby, you you actually shuttle a lot of your deuterium to your baby. To the baby, to grow. And um, you can actually, they found, get rid of autoimmunity when you're uh, pregnant. pregnant and have a baby because you, you're you getting rid of, it's allowing you to shed a lot of this deuterium. Mm-hmm. But a lot of these people go back to their bad ways their circadian disrupted after they have a baby so mm-hmm. they can but it was interesting that she made these changes to her diet to carnivore when she had a baby so she had a lot of things compounding at the same time that yeah. probably helped her kind of launch her into this like good state because yeah. i think the keto flu and stuff is um caused from the tca cycle being deuterated mm-hmm and when it's deuterated, you can't, um, it's called Krebs bicycle. It's at the junction of, um, 
the TCA and the urea cycle. And this is how you pretty much make, when you're on a carnivore keto diet, you're pretty much relying on this um, way of making energy. But if it's deuterated, your oxygen tension in your cell drops, and then you have to utilize um, the PPP and glycolysis to make energy. Mm -hmm. And that's where you get a keto flu because it's like your body's having a rough time so um, she moved the other way. Then. So if you're really sick, I mean that's why this it's longer periods of getting um, to adjusting to eating keto. Mm-hmm. But if you deuterium deplete and do these things, you can actually do it out in sunlight, and you that helps you get into ketosis. Or if you drink, if you started to drink deuterium depleted water, eating low carb will become a lot easier. Easier for and sure. And just shift over to that. Yeah. But that these are just kind of things I'm bouncing around. Some theories, yeah. yeah. Um, hyperbolic ox- hyperbaric oxygen therapy, that's another one. I just thought I'd throw that in there. Uh, that could be dangerous. I wouldn't... I might do it because I'm health, like pretty yeah, healthy. Yeah. But like, if I had cancer, like, you have to have someone who really knows what they're doing. So that, was, that used to be on my list of like, if I had cancer, I would do this. And now it's off my list. Yeah. Um, I don't want to get too much into that, but it kind of has to do with this deuterium and oxygen, how your body utilizes oxygen and, um, intravenous high dose vitamin C is another thing that's on my radar for cancer cures or things I would do. And what that's doing is helping liberate, um, deuterium from the TCA cycle. I'm going to go with that. So I'm cool with that. Like that's something I would probably try. But I would work closely with a doctor. Yes. And then methylene blue intravenously um, with infrared and red light exposure from sunlight um, makes it, uh, like studies have shown that it makes it um, more effective. So I think that's a really, really good thing. But I think it'd be hard to find a doctor that would do it yeah. outdoors intravenously, but that's an option. That's what I would be looking at doing. Um, but I, I don't want to talk too much about that. I personally would also be taking CBD oil for cancer and pretty much every other medical condition. Specifically, um, I would only use a CBD oil from plants grown outdoors and full spectrum sunlight. Uh, don't use CBD from plants grown indoors under fake lights. Um, I like Charlotte's Web for this reason. It comes from only outdoor plants and they test all their CBD tinctures before selling them. And they have extremely high standards on what they'll keep to sell and what they throw out. Um, I can get it at my local grocery store, but you can also get it online. It's one of those things that really can't hurt you. CBD and cannabinoids act on inhibiting COX-2 pathway, which helps with inflammation and helps restore apoptosis and autophagy. So what I'm saying is watching the sunrise and controlling blue light at night is way more effective than taking CBD, but it doesn't hurt to also be taking CBD. I believe the positive benefits people are seeing and finding from taking CBD are coming from what it's doing to deuterium at the smallest scales. Also doing fasting and intermittent fasting can um, be a great tool for cancer and all diseases. It kind of goes hand in hand with the ketogenic and carnivore style diets. Um, But a lot of people will do those while still living in high EMF environment. They don't control for circadian rhythm and they don't do it outdoors in sunlight. And those are the things I would do on top of it to make it more effective. Um, And then also I just want to emphasize um, that you can't get better in the same environment in which you got sick. So you need to make drastic changes to your current environment um, with the lighting, turning off the Wi-Fi, uh, blocking any source of EMF that you can, or you may just need to leave your apartment, get out of downtown. Um, You may need to move south. Uh, If you're really sick, you need to move to a lower latitude. Um, if I had cancer, I would ditch everything and go, go to Mexico um, for, for at least a few weeks um, or until I got better. But deuterium on Mars, I just wanted to point out 
<laughs> how stupid Elon Musk is. Like this week, they released the details on his um, neuro whatever, link, yeah. neuro link, which is absolutely ridiculous. I know you're crazy. Like it's a microwave chip. Like four so it's of them, Bluetooth chip up to four. Or, like they're gonna put multiple of these, and then you have a device that connects straight into your, your ear brain. That's also bluetooth and then it hooks to your phone that's bluetooth my freaking god and it's on you 24 7 and these they're planning on doing this to people that are sick i know i mean i'm fascinated with what they'll get from it yeah i am and what i my perspective also was like i am not in a situation where i am a quadriplegic or and so maybe it would be worth it for me yeah you know so I can't pass judgment, but, but talking I know... about deuterium, yeah. these you wear headphones, you put your phone up to your head, um, or um, until Apple I got better. Pods, when you wear an Apple Watch, any of these devices Deuterating. are causing you to collect deuterium. Yeah. It's screwing up these mechanisms that control deuterium, and you're gonna collect deuterium in your brain and get more neurological dysfunction. Yeah. Like so, like if you want to cure CTE or prevent it mm-hmm. as a football player, you need to deuterium deplete your brain. Yes. If you have Alzheimer's, you need to deuterium deplete your brain. And the ways that you deuterate your brain and cause fun- dysfunction is you hold a phone up to your head, mm-hmm. you live in a high EMF environment, mm-hmm. and you wear you like ear pods all day yeah. and be but wireless headphones. It's- essentially, going to Mars, is it's like a deuterium bomb. Everything would increase deuterium. So the amount of deuterium in the water on Mars, so they're reliant on going there and drinking the water on Mars, Mm -hmm. filtrating it. Mm -hmm. And I don't know how stupid the people that have to be that are working. Like, how do they not know that they can't drink that water? And how difficult it is to deuterium deplete water. They're not going to be able to do that. So maybe that's, maybe technology in the future. If they do that, they'll save the world though. True. Like, they'll cure of all diseases if they can come up with a way to deplete Easily de- the deplete. deuterium on Mars. Yeah. Maybe. I'm just well, even for throwing our own ideas planet. out there. Yeah. But if they do that, and then, but that's just one aspect. Our mitochondria have evolved to live on our planet with our exact gravity, with our exact sunlight, the exact spectrum of sun coming through the atmosphere, and all of these things crazy like infinite complex things that we evolved to live on this earth and then you take that away like that's a good way to lose your mind and get massive mitochondrial dysfunction yeah. living in space we've shown it causes methylation mm-hmm. methylation issues and you come back a mess like, and that was only like for a few months yeah that was for he was up there for a year yeah. Which, what's crazy is a Russian was up there for almost two years. I want to know what the Russians were doing to allow that. So, But they, they do this water stuff. They know some crazy shit we don't. Well, a lot of this research started in Russia for the water stuff. If astronauts, if you can live on Mars, I mean, yeah, there's no way you can go to Mars and not go crazy. Like, I, I just don't see them being able, they're not in the right direction um, like biology isn't going in the right direction to ever get the technology to allow us yeah. to hack that. Like I just, I just want it's us to stay here. It's unhackable to me to be able to live on Mars. We evolved for here, so we should figure out how to stay here. Oh, and then the last thing, watching that video on what they're doing with the satellites, oh. Elon Musk's satellite program, Star something. Starlink? Starlink. Man. Everything link? I don't know. It's like 7,000 satellites. Oh, maybe it's no One of five that. companies. But they're like the leading the race of how to do it. But then there's going to be five other companies that copy them. So there's going to be like 20,000 satellites Ugh. just orbiting. And they all have like the ones currently that they're launching have five antennas. And they can cover like 600 kilometers uh, square, square kilometers. So aggressive. They're what just kind? blanketing. And I think that's the direction 5G is going to go because 5G has been a complete failure mm-hmm. if you read the articles of, like, where it's launched. And it's like, it doesn't work indoors. It works. It's so spotty. And the amount of towers we have in Minneapolis to 
do 5G and it's still not working. Yeah. It's like, I hopefully they just throw it up, but then they'll probably move. Who knows what they'll... It's going to change. The thing it's is, gonna is I don't think 5G is a good idea because, like, to your point, it's a, sh- it's a s- super short frequency. It gets blocked very easily by buildings, and it's like, then why? What is the push? All because then we can connect more shit? Well, no. Then it's defeating the purpose. The whole reason people want cell services so they can have like accessibility anywhere not yeah. because they want all of their fucking devices connected to one thing we already have that yeah it's already good enough like we don't need 5g the only reason they're doing it is to lower latency and it's so they can continue to grow and continue to invest in their infrastructure to then charge us for xyz to then get us new phones to do it's it's a growth strategy well and there's industry incentive a lot of money to be made when you speed up the That's what latency. I just said. Well, a lot of money to be made in investing and like they spend millions of dollars to build a fiber optic wire from like one from Europe to the US mm-hmm. and the when you can lower the latency like mm-hmm. these AI programs can do crazy trading and yeah. if you can speed that up yes, there's it's that worth was the billions other thing. of dollars just to speed up the connection by like Fractions, tiny, so tiny dirty. fractions of a second. Yeah, it's dirty. It's so dirty. It's, yeah. it's manipulating the market, and yep. it's it's something that your typical person... It's not fair because I, as a trader, can't do that mm-hmm. if I were to trade. like I get it. That's what I've heard. Yeah. Well, on that note, I think that wraps up our water podcast and episode four. Yep. Um, I think next time we'll talk about... Seafood and DHA? I think we've talked about that enough. Okay. Eat your seafood and DHA. I, we're going to mention that on every podcast. Yeah. What about, okay, do we want a podcast on I don't know therapy? what it'll be about. Yeah, probably. And on um, haplotypes and things? Probably. Okay. So More that'll on be mitochondria, the next one. too. Yeah. We'll do like a mitochondria. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then... That's a good idea. Focus on cold therapy. We might talk about also um, addiction. I want to cover addiction because that's kind of a fascination I have right now. That might be a different um, podcast. I, I think some people, like, it's beneficial for people. Yeah. All right. <coughs> uh, subscribe on YouTube, Apple, Stitcher, Spotify, or CastBox. Um, listen to episodes one through three. Um, and thanks follow, everyone for listening. Yeah. Um, even follow us though on we Instagram. have a low amount of people, we're still gonna do it because it's one. It's fun. It gives me something An to outlet. do. An outlet. Yeah. Um, and it's the only way that I can relay this information to people that are close to me, even if they're not listening to it now. Mm. They will eventually. Yeah. In time. Yeah, but um, follow us on Instagram, Twitter, Facebook. All at Waken Podcast or W A K N Podcast. Yup, peace. Bye. I recommend checking out any podcast interview with Dr. Laszlo Boros or Dr. Gabor Somalier. Um, both are experts on deuterium and deuterium depletion and cancer. Uh, my favorite interview with Dr. Laszlo Boros was the Lifestylist podcast with Luke Story, episode number 165 on deuterium depletion. Deuterium is becoming a more popular subject, and if you're looking for it, you're going to find a lot of new podcasts that come out on deuterium depletion. Um, I also recommend checking out Dr. Jack Cruz and his website, and if you're really interested in becoming a member of his He goes to greater depths on the subject of deuterium than anyone else. Um, He's my number one go-to for information, and a lot of this podcast was influenced what I've learned from him. Um, And if you put his name into a Google search box with deuterium or pretty much any disease, you'll get back some pretty awesome um, answers and material that he's put out. Um, If you're actually sick with any serious diseases, I would recommend you work with DD centers um, with Dr. Laszlo Boros and his team um, to use deuterium depleted water and their protocols properly, um, along with other deuterium depleting recommendations that I'm going to make on this podcast today.